<clears throat> okay, looking over number 66, if you didn't understand what to do. Andy is making a map for geography. In order to draw the map, he must create a scale converting the measured inches on the map to the actual miles. Remember that a scale is a comparison, <laughs> excuse me, a comparison of two quantities. They're going to have different units. So really, any of these ordered pairs could make a scale, okay? But he wants to make a scale that's going to be like a unit scale or, or a unit rate. So we want one inch is to how many miles. All you need to do is you can pick any point to start with, and I would write it as a, as a rate or as a scale, which means write it as a fraction. You're seeing that I'm picking one and one half because I know what decimal it is, and maybe you like decimals better when you're working with a calculator. So I would say one and a half, and that's inches, is equivalent to 54 miles. Well, this is a scale, but we want to see what scale is equivalent to this if you're comparing one inch. I know I want one inch because that's what all the answers are. In a proportion, you need to make each side match. Since inches are on top over here, they should be on top over here. We don't know how many miles, so X is on the bottom and X stands for miles. Solve the proportion then by cross multiplying and you get 15 times x equals 54, I'm sorry, 1.5 times x equals 54 times 1, or 1.5x equals 54. To solve for x, you need to divide by 1 and 1 half. You can use your calculator, and you will get 36, I believe, 54 divided by 1 and a half is 36. So the answer is one inch is the 36 miles. Your scale is right here. One inch is the how many miles we solved for x and we got 36. If you had questions with number 67, we're writing an equation in slope intercept form and we're given two points that the line goes through. From two points you can find the slope then. Slope is equal to the change in y divided by the change in x. So this is my first point. This is my x from the first point and my y from the first point. This is my second point. This is my x from the second point and my y from the second point. Plug them in then. y2 is 4 minus y1. y1 is 7 over x2 is 7 minus x1 is 3. So the slope, or m, equals 4 minus 7 is a negative 3. 7 minus 3 is a positive 4. Looking at the equations that they give you then, you can rule some answers out. If you know slope-intercept form, we know that b has a positive 3 4 slope. We want a negative 3 4 slope and C has a negative 4 third slope. Again, we want a negative 3 4 slope. So now you're between A and D. Which y-intercept works? You have a couple options here. You could actually just plug in a point and see if it works, see if this side comes out to equal this side. Or you can solve for the y-intercept. If you solve for the y-intercept, you can plug either point in for x and y. So I'm just going to pick the first point. 3 is my x, that goes underneath x. y is, my, is 7, goes underneath my y. We already found what m is. m is negative 3 fourths. But what you don't know is b. Solve for b, and that will give you your y-intercept. So we would have 7 equals negative 3 fourths times 3. It's going to give you negative 9 fourths. Then you would have to add 9 fourths to both sides. 7 and 9 fourths is going to be the same as 28 fourths. That's the 7, right? All I did was multiply it by 4 over 4 to get, it with a, to get a common denominator. 28 divided by 4 is 7, so those are equivalent. If I add 9 fourths, 28 plus 9, just add the numerators, keep the denominator. Your correct answer would be A, 
37 fourths. Problem number 68, find the x and y intercepts. You may remember the cover-up method, but you can also think about what these points are on the graph. Every x-intercept is on the x-axis, right? That's what we're finding. Where would the graph, where would the graph touch the x-axis? Well, every point on the x-axis has the same y value. You're going over so far on x, but you're going up none on the y. So in order to find the x-axis, you let y equal 0. Plug in 0 for y and solve for x. Then to find the y-intercept, every point on this y-axis has an x value of 0. So then let x equal 0 and solve. So let's do this. If y equals 0, I would have negative x plus 2 times 0 equals 8. 2 times 0 is just 0, so I have negative x equals 8. Or multiply by negative 1 or divide by negative 1. And x equals negative 8. If I put 0 in for x, there's no such thing as a negative 0 or negative sign outside of zero still gives you zero, so that's really just gone. And you have 2y equals 8, divide by 2, and y equals 4. So your x-intercept is negative 8, and the y-intercept is a positive 4. Your correct answer is D. For number 69, then, find the slope of the line. Remember that slope is counting the rise over the run. So you can use the slope formula, or you can count how far did you rise, how far did you run. Um, I rose 1, 2, and I ran 1, 2, 3. So my slope is 2 thirds. You could also use the formula and plug in the points to get this. Your correct answer is 2 thirds. Okay, number 70 looks a little overwhelming. Tony drove for several hours, recording the distance he traveled in miles. Graph the data and show the rate of change. The rate, graph, I'm sorry, graph the data and show the rates of change. So the, these points here are graphed. Um, and they're going to be these bottom ones. They're the line. Then the, all these triangles, these are counting the rise and the run or the rate of change. So just remember that. So the first thing I would do is start with the first point and make sure that this point, one hour to 50 miles, is graphed in all the graphs. One hour, 50 miles, that one's good. One hour, wait, this is 50 hours, one mile. Already we can rule out C. Check for the other ones. One hour, 50 miles, and one hour, 50 miles. I'm not just checking the placement of the point, but I'm checking it to the labels on the x and y axis, too. Then check for um, uh, 420, 400, sorry, four hours and 220 miles. Four, 220. Four, 220. Yeah, those look about right. And four, 220. Now check for the change that happened between these points. And I like to look at the table for this. What, changed ha what change happened in the hours if you went from hour one to hour four? Why well, added three, right? And what change happened for miles if you went from 50 miles to 220 miles? Or what is the difference? What did you add? We'll find the difference to figure that out. I added 170. So now look at the graphs and check to make sure they have that change. From the first green point to the second point, did I go up 170 and over 3? Now this one only went up 140, so I would say A is incorrect. 
And now that I look at this point, I might think, well, that could have been 200 and not 220. But that's really close. This change shows you where it's incorrect. Check a look at B. Did I go up 170 and over 3? Yes. Take a look at D. Did I go up 170? No, I went up 220. So the correct answer is B. We could keep going to check the other points. From 220 to 300, I went up 80. From 300 to 320, I went up 20. From 320 to 500, I went up 180. Yep, those are right. From 4 to 6, I went over 2. From 6 to 7, I went over 1. And from 7 to 10, I went over 3. Those are correct. Number 71. Katie creates a budget for her weekly expenses. The graph shows how much money is in the account at different times. Find the slope of the line. Remember that slope is your rate of change. So find how much she's changing. You can also count the rise over the run. So use the slope formula or count rise over run. I can see what kind of slope this has. The line is trending downward, so I'm going to end up with a negative slope, which with money, that means it's decreasing or I'm spending more money than I'm making. So count how much you rise. Well, here I went down, I went from 2,400 to the level of just 2,000. Look at the Y values. So I went down $400. Then count how far you went over. Well, you were at 4, and you went all the way over to 12, so you went over 8. Use your calculator to divide this, or think of 40 divided by 8. 40 divided by 8 is 5, so 400 divided by 8 would be 50, and I have a negative divided by a positive. It would be a negative 50. Now let's interpret what that means. Remember that the slope is dollars or is y over x, so it's dollars to weeks. So this represents a negative 50, or negative 50 over 1, which is going to represent the change in the money to the change in the weeks. Read your options here. Well, you can rule out c and d because your slopes are not negative 50. Read a and b then. The slope is negative 50. The slope means the amount of money in the account is decreasing at a rate of $50 every week. The slope is negative 50. The slope means that the amount of money in the account is decreasing at a rate of $50 every two weeks. Well, it's $50 every one week. If it was $50 every two weeks, that would really be a slope of $25. The one that matches your answer is A. Last one in this video then, number 72, tell whether the function is linear, if so graph it. This should look familiar to you. This is the y equals mx plus b form. So that is a linear function. Look at the y-intercepts first. Your y-intercept is the b value, or negative 3. Match the graph with, with the equation looking at the y-intercepts. This y-intercept on the y-axis is at negative 3. That's good. This graph intersects the y-axis at a positive 3. That doesn't work. And this intersects the y-axis somewhere between 0 and 1. That does not work. So a is the correct answer. You can also check the slope. Did I go 5 or 5 over 1 when I rise? Rise 1, 2, 3, sorry, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 over 1. That works. The correct answer is A.